Previously on The Last of Us, Season 1, Episode 6. They're still looking for the medical scientist somewhere out west, and Joel got stabbed. Will he survive? Find out, this time on The Last of Us. How did you feel about this episode? Season 7. Uh, uh, <laughs> episode 1, Season... No! <laughs> season 1, Episode 7. There we go. Uh, I thought it was a good episode. I enjoyed the young love moments. Uh, overall, I give it a 7 out of 10. I really liked the exploring of the mall and the date night. It felt like back in high school, you know. Uh, I thought the love story was compelling. Uh, it did kind of feel like the post-apocalyptic setting was an afterthought. Um, yeah. Like, So that's why I kind of knocked it down a little bit. Uh, yeah, it didn't really feel apocalyptic until the infected guy attacked them. Then I was like, oh, shit, you know, now it's real. Um, I also thought Ellie was ready to follow Kwong's guidance. Um, like she kind of so. believed him. And so this particular coincidence in her life path changed from going Fedra leadership way to the finding Joel. I mean, this could have been like a crossroads of crossroads in her life so crossroads yeah. of crossroads that's beautiful yeah <laughs> i i also felt that she was ready to pull riley along with her she she was ready to convince riley to come back to to vedra and um, riley uh, ellie was ready like to climb the the power structure of vedra i also thought it was a beautiful story the springtime of youth that simple romance where just going to an arcade or merry around just walking around on the mall that was this some high school times that's such it's beautiful youth um, but it was frustrating. I also felt this, that they were very, very careless about being in an apocalypse. Like, you got to be very hidden, very stealthy, very cautious. And they were they're throwing caution into the wind. Now, now part of that is teenage love. But, oh, man, so, so nice. Remember this time, this beautiful springtime of youth stuff, just springtime. Um, but still, the, these these two women were, were born and, and raised in this apocalypse times. They would They would be chemically wired differently in their brain to be precautious just all the time now although riley dies it's it's so so bittersweet that that ellie just finds loves before that's before it's snatched away from us but the good part of riley's sacrifice is that we do find the potential savior of humanity so so okay i guess i mean riley's a very important character in that sense um at the end of this episode, Joel is still stabbed, and will he survive? Uh, find out on The Last of Us. Episode 8. Should be this episode. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we'll, maybe. We'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. The Last of Us. Let me get a little title card. Right. So we hop into episode 7. That's it. Oh. Episode 7. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh yeah, so this is the last scene of episode six. Joel has been stabbed. He's sitting next to these railroad tracks. It's looking bleak. I mean, sitting is a generous way to say that. He's next. He's, he's laying, <laughs> bleeding out on the, next yeah. to these railroad tracks. <laughs> yeah. And if we go to the left here, uh, somehow they don't ever show us. They get to this house. Here's the horse in the garage. She parked it back. She's back in. <laughs> <laughs> and then if we go to the left of the board there's the actual house so they didn't show this i was confused like how did they get from this look like sort of farmland out in the wherever in colorado to a suburban house ellie was able to get joel up onto the horse and then guide the horse without joel falling off all the way here hmm. i'd be curious to see how that happened so right and if you see down here towards the bottom of the picture, this looks like a very uh, like a flat wide section. Something's is this Joel being dragged? Now there are little blood Ooh. spatters. But that's mm -hmm. wide. Is is <laughs> Joel being drugged with his arms out? <laughs> like <laughs> well, maybe she found a piece of sheet metal or a, oh, some wood, wood. And, 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 and tied it to the horse and then that's put the Joel on that and then dragged him. Still, they seem at very far away. I mean, maybe either. if we looked the other direction, so we're looking at the the railroad tracks. If we looked the other direction, there was a settlement. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And maybe just on the left side of the camera angle, there's like a wooden plank there, and she just, mm -hmm. there's like yeah. a leftover from the set of Titanic. She just pulled it over from him, put him on board, drag him out. That's right. 
<laughs> I mean, she could have she could have gone to those the little buildings over there, gotten something. I don't know. That's it would have been interesting to see. Later on in the episode, we see here this is a Fedra training facility, I think, uh, and and I am I am surprised by how well supplied this place is. Like, first of all, lights. Any type of power in, in Apocalypse is awesome. Secondly, approximately matching uniforms, like pretty, pretty, pretty good. At mm. 20 years after the apocalypse, they still got these nets. I grew up in neighborhoods where we didn't even have nets <laughs> like in normal days. Like this yeah. is the apocalypse time they got nets. Like this is really good. And this is a women's facility specifically. So they are able to they have two of these facilities to separate the boys and the girls. Fedra's, Fedra's doing a real good job. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly so. They even have supplies like batteries to operate Walkman. And, and they even have the, the cassette tapes that are that are functioning in 2023. Now, cassette tapes, like the film breaks down over time. There's like a 10 year shelf life. And so that means that for at least two, three versions of this of this cassette, they're they are re-recording these to keep that the music alive. So this is this I is mean, well maintained. It may not be. They may just be using the old cassette tapes. They just. You know, over time, more static is introduced into oh, sure. the Good music. Point. Good point. And maybe it's probably not like at ten years; it's like psh, it breaks. It's more like a exponential over time. decay. Yeah. So maybe if we actually listen to the music, it would not be so nice because it's kind of got a lot of static involved. Maybe. Oh, Ellie also may just get used to it and may not even notice the static anymore. Actually, That's you right. may even think it's just part of the song. Mm-hmm. So this is Captain Kwong's office and uh, very clean, very well supplied. I did like that there's no computers or anything. It's all paper, which makes sense in the apocalypse. They have the power up and running, but not computer systems or any kind of database. I guess that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so Fedra is really organized. It's quite, uh, quite nice. There's one more. Yeah, this is Ellie's bedroom. So Fedra is so well supplied that they have a variety of things that teenagers can put up on their walls. Like this is an organization that is handling it quite well. They got like Mm -hmm. comics and I I don't know what the other Mm -hmm. tenants, the other students, the other trainees, they've got their own things too. I mean, Fedra's, Mm -hmm. Fedra's doing real good. But I mean, also maybe the kids would often go on scavenging hunts because they don't have anything else to do. So they keep their keepsakes from there wandering around. Maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Also power. They still have power. Still have power. And not controlled at like a central location where they're like, everyone's lights off. Like, no, they let you handle your own lights. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Fedra patrols. Uh, yeah, Fedra patrols. Send it. Guards? No, because Fedra's fucking stupid. Ah, so much noise. So loud. Not that fucking stupid, are they? (laughs) I just was a little mad at Riley for being so cavalier. Uh, She said, Riley said that Marlene had followed her around and was impressed with her sneaking ability. And she's this is a blunder. O'Reilly. This is a blunder. Being she so very the, narrowly, yeah. luckily, didn't get caught by the car. I mean, it was half second in either direction, and you're toast. Toast. I mean, actually, what Ellie would get in trouble, but we would be back in the dorm. Riley is a member of the Fireflies now, so she would be in. R- Riley is up for trouble. execution. No, I, yeah. it's a torture, then execution. Mm-hmm. And also, Ellie, they may not trust her anymore. They may think that she's a mm-hmm. spy, that she's a connection to the Fireflies. Mm-hmm. So she might also, she at least wouldn't go up to mm-hmm. Fedra um, high ranking stuff anymore. She'd probably mm-hmm. get shit jobs. Yeah. Ooh, close call. Yeah, close call. Whew. A little mad at Riley. So this is after they've escaped the patrol, they wandered around the town, and now they're looking down on Boston. I just wanted to look at like, you know, it's actually in pretty good shape. They've got buildings, they've got street lights, which actually may be super important because I know street lights prevent crime. So keeping the street lights on may keep the streets illuminated enough to stop, 
you know, wandering people, which so that kind of makes sense. Um, I noticed well, no lights are on in the windows. Uh, that's weird. That is weird. I guess m maybe most people don't have power. Can I ask, is this inside the Boston quarantine zone? So like this is inside Fedra's base? It's got to be inside. Is, I think it's inside because they're powering it. It's right. It's got to be inside. Right. Yeah. So I guess this is what a standard Fedra street looks like at okay. night. Lights at night because they have oppressive control over their, their people. So like people are going to do nefarious things at night because they're not happy with the, with the organization. Okay. And in terms of maintaining Boston, this is kind of how Boston looks. So uh, <laughs> good, good spot. Yeah. Firearm safety. The these girls. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be a stickler, but like they're real loosey goosey with handling firearms. Look at this. Can I hold your gun? <laughs> Let's drink. Give me your gun. All right, fine. <laughs> Plow. Oh. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was no like. Here's the safety. Don't point at me. Like she points it directly through Ellie's hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super dangerous. Isn't it weird? Because they're they're both they have both been students at this Fedra school for. Mm -hmm. Maybe not military, but maybe police-ish things. It's, it's pre-paramilitary, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, they should be somewhat familiar with handling, handling firearms. I guess not. They haven't learned, they haven't graduated to that level yet. I wonder if firearms are super rare, so it's you have to be, like, full-time security person before you get to handle them. Mm. So maybe yeah. once they graduate high school and they go to, like, Fedra tactical training, they actually get to handle weapons. <laughs> Fedra tech. <laughs> it's like a community <laughs> college. <laughs> All she had to do was bully Riley just a little bit. <laughs> she got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, well, Riley has feelings. It's true. Mm -hmm. This scene. Mm -hmm. I think we have a clip about flashlight problems. Let's check it out. About. Here we go. This really is the best night of my life. Oh. <laughs> That's. One point for the anarchists. Oh, you fucking Come on. Percussive maintenance <laughs> does not work. Don't work. Also, we had mentioned in previous episodes that they should be, if they have two flashlights, one should be on unless it's absolutely necessary for two to be on. It should conserve batteries. And we talked about hardware breaking, you know, if you use it too much. Uh, it's just Delia is so cavalier with her flashlight. What if that goes out and she can't see? You know, she's what if you banging the flashlight, making noise. I can hear. I can he making noise. I can hear the batteries rattling around inside the casing. If I hope that's an LED flashlight, not a f not anything else. Incandescent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks incandescent, and yeah. and she needs to do maintenance on this. <laughs> Yeah. So 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 the fact that it turns on and all means that it's not a and, and it's strong. It's not a battery issue. So the battery is juiced. The mm -hmm. the on off behavior like that is electrical. Like 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 meaning connectivity. So that's either the switch or the little springy in there. And those are easy things to fix if you mm -hmm. know what you're doing. So perhaps you should take a trip to, to the lab. The li li yeah, uh, sorry, <laughs> the, the, li the, library. the library. Yeah, she yeah. she could totally learn how to re repair this if mm -hmm. she just went to the library, learned a little bit about circuits, and That's and right. she could totally repair that that flashlight herself. I but would also hasn't. put in. I would also put in there just cleaning that like little yeah. piece of contact metal in the flashlight mm -hmm. uh, might have gotten some grime or something on them. So you go in there with some, you know, alcohol would be would be perfect get so in there moonshine and, here yeah yeah moonshine and just clean all the surfaces to make sure all the contact is good and then you're talking about the spring versus the switch maybe you could make sure everything is nice and tight yeah. this is flashlight maintenance you're not there's no is there a factory pumping out new flashlights i'm not so sure Probably maybe not. la la maintain your flashlight <laughs> Uh, I 
think we have a clip creepy? for this. This is a clip about the, ah, the mall. This is when they make it into the mall and Riley hits the switch and all the lights come on. Yeah. Turns out when Fedra connected that block up to the grid, this place got connected too. Not that they know. So what are we doing here? Trying to get electrocuted or? Fucking turn right, yep. open the door, tell me when you're there. Here, now what? We're fine. You saw outside, it's like a big bunker. No one can see shit but us. That 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 cannot be true. It cannot be true. That cannot that cannot, be, cannot true. be true. You, be you're true. in a. We saw that one picture of the the cityscape of Fedra. We could barely see anything. Everything's you know. super dark. <laughs> Everything's super dark. Your eyes are adjusted, and you're like, "What? What? What is that? It's like light streaming from the mall." <laughs> right. And so so like, yeah, it's a bunker. There's concrete all around blocking light. But this here at the top, of these rafters, is a glass mm -hmm. ceiling. That means all this light is being reflected up into the sky. Now, nobody's up there in the sky looking down, but if you do astronomy, like you have to deal with light pollution. That's just light that's being shot up into the sky and reflecting back off of mm -hmm. clouds, off of dust, off of air, all sorts of junk. Like you get a glow around the city. That's why when you go to the countryside, it's super dark. But here, effectively in, in apocalypse times, everywhere is super dark. So if this mall's light is on and there's light shining up through this glass, this glass ceiling here, they're illuminating the the block at least the several miles around them. Like this would be super visible. Well, I was also thinking, so Fedra is running some kind of power plant in the settlement of Boston. And they probably have power constraints. Sounds like they do have some abundance, but if you have this massive load that enters into the you know, the cir the uh, the circuits of the city, mm. you're going to notice that you can't, mm -hmm. you know, they this is such an enormous electrical load. There's no way they're like, oh, they didn't know it was connected. Maybe, but if you flip a switch, you know, they're going right. to know unless right. they're so incompetent. I, I don't see how that could be. You're maintaining a power plant on old with old equipment and maintaining it probably in a bare bones sort of fashion. You're going to be pretty yeah. constrained intuitive. on your resources. Yeah. <sighs> Amazing. Amazing. Also, all everything works. There's no wa everything water works. inclusion. Yeah. Oh, Amazing. yeah. And everything's on. I, the way I figured that everything was on, I figured that Riley went through to all these stores and like turned on the switches. <laughs> like, 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 this is going to be impressive when I show it. Yeah, throw <laughs> the switch and everything comes on. I mean, that is romantic. That is, that is possible because she did say she prepped for this night. But hmm. how, do, how do you know how to maintain and fix electrical in a building i did the backstory the, the research on riley and she's a very strong library enthusiast so i believe it for mm -hmm. her yep she went to the library and studied mm -hmm. the merry-go-round oh <laughs> my gosh okay 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 first super cute super romantic mm -hmm. high school this love this young love the springtime of youth adorable i love it but it was so loud. Open your eyes. Yeah, adorable. Even that little shy face. What? No way. Yep. You're drunk. No. Basically, all of high school for me, just constantly <laughs> accusing people of being drunk, <laughs> but, but also like these cute scenes. Oh mm -hmm. man. Well, I mean, the scene before where the lights come on, I mean, it's it would if you actually were in that situation and you'd never really seen lights, it would just be spectacular. That's right. Now a merry-go-round all lit up, I mean, it would be romantic as hell. Yeah. Not only the lights, but the colors and the slight spinning. Oof. Mm, that yeah. would get me. Mm. But so loud! But so loud! So, yeah. If there's any infected, <laughs> if there's any infected, or even people... For that mm -hmm. matter, around here, seeing lights, hearing music, they're gonna be like, "What is happening here? Let me go find right. out." They turn the corner, they see a merry go round. They're like, "I'm, I'm on." They're hopping I'm on. on. They're they're sprinting yeah. towards that merry go round. Are these are these two? They're gonna share. That's risky. No, that's risky. It might be a standoff. What if there's like a, you know, some there might even be people living in the mall. 
That's right. You know, now I guess Riley scoped it out, but then she didn't know the infected was there. And that guy was kind of living in, in the mall. In the mall, yeah. He was like attached yeah. to the walls like a borg. Not, not dead. Technically living. Yeah. Yeah. Secure the perimeter. Secure the perimeter. Always secure the perimeter. The first thing you do is secure the perimeter. Second thing you do is fatalities. Go ahead. What <laughs> so, you say? It, this, the third part was the, the freaking romantic arcade, you know. Oh, so ah, cute. Uh, so oh, cute. Love it. I don't know how feasible it is in the apocalypse. But once we're there, I just love the, the Molina fatality. <laughs> she eats the guy and spits out, like, how many, how many femurs does this guy have? <laughs> this, guy, this guy's only femurs. <laughs> Look at this. Only femurs. <laughs> only femurs. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to say this is the most unrealistic thing that has ever happened in this show. She's never done a... Ellie has never done a fatality for first time playing the game. While the fatal, while the announcer says fatality, she then is told the moves verbally and then executes them flawlessly first try. It's the most... Uh, just that would not happen. That's unrealistic. In my experience, is what would happen is that Riley would have had a lot more experience and she would have never let Ellie win. In fact, she would never would have let Ellie even touch the ground. She would have juggled Ellie's character in the air, just constantly doing a little bit of damage to just make it super frustrating. That's I hate fighting games. <laughs> Whoa, triggered. <laughs> so triggered. <laughs> well, have you ever tried to do... Okay, so besides the fact that you got wrecked in fighting games when you were a kid... Hate okay, it. have you ever tried to do like a, a, a special move the first time when somebody's oh, explained to you never. in a game and the pressure's never on? Works. It's never going to happen the first time. The fact Except that, that she one that time, off. that one time I drove that car in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, that one time I drove that, remember this? And like it perfectly through that enemy base. And then you, and I, oh, like, every yeah. turn was just perfect, just drifting. Oh. I'd never been in there. And then, <laughs> and then we're like, can you do that again? I turned around. Oh my gosh. Shit. That was ridiculous. That was truly ridiculous. It was amazing. We both, okay. we like drove to the end of the enemy base and we're like, did that just happen? Did that just happen? Yeah. Clear, clear the perimeter. You got to know that your base is empty before you let your guard down. This was bad on Riley. I mean, okay, so the mall is big, but it's not so big. You have to walk every single room in it. Make sure all the doors are secured, at least on the first floor. And clear everything out. I think this was, this guy was like, in his like Borg nest, fungus nest, um, inside a store in the mall. Yeah. Riley really screwed up. Riley really screwed up. I mean, if you're going to bring a girl to the emptied out mall to be romantic and flirty and fun, you got to make sure it's safe. Gotta and so sure earlier, Riley's like, Ellie, do you trust me with your life? And Ellie says, yes. I think these two young women growing up in the cordyceps apocalypse would be so on edge all the time they would have seen people make mistakes where they didn't clear the perimeter and then you know, the most of the team died from it i think they 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 wouldn't you wouldn't really ever have situations where you just 100 percent put your faith in someone because even if they are well intended they might make a mistake they might miss a corner here and then now your entire team's dead so so this actually took me out of the show because this shouldn't have happened if they had their proper SOPs, their standard operating procedures on how to make sure that places were safe. So, yeah. So when Riley says, trust me with your life, there's two things going on there. One is a intentions trust. Yeah. And the other one is a competence trust. So I think the intentions were there. But Ellie is also saying, like, I, I'm going to trust that you're competent at clearing a place out making sure it's safe because i haven't been there before so the intentions wise riley trustworthy but Absolutely. maybe but competence wise you cannot trust her I, this, I is, mean, this is such a betrayal nobody would be competent to be nobody would be sufficiently competent not even a team would be sufficiently competent such that you could truly trust your life to them because it's it's such high stakes it's it's not like do i trust riley to be competent enough to get us uh a loaf of bread from the store sure what the penalties for that is you don't get bread the penalties for this is you die 
In fact, potentially multiple people die. Okay. That, like, I, I, I take that. I, I disagree with that. And here's oh. why. If, if you were clearing a mall for me, right? And then you said, trust me, the mall's clear. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm trusting you because mm-hmm. I, know, I know you would do it. Mm-hmm. And the stakes are high, but I'm going to trust you. If it's some Joe Bluff street, I'm not going to trust him. But I'm trusting you. That's so. I think they're saying that Riley and Ellie are at that level of trust. It's just Riley sucks at clearing places out. Oh, you're saying that you would trust me for the interpersonal reasons, but the competence wise. <laughs> no, I'm saying I would trust you on both accounts intentions hey. and competence hey, hey, hey. in this situation. So if you said the mall is clear, or last time I checked eight hours ago, mall was clear. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say probably good. Oh so yeah, I I'd burn the thing to the ground. So there are some specific people in some people's lives where they would trust without checking. Um, so Riley this really time, fucked up. Riley really fucked up. She had plenty of time. Mm-hmm. Checked it out. In fact, she had been living in this in the mall several days this guy was here she could have gotten caught earlier right she's sleeping in there mm-hmm. making sounds running around turning on lights mm-hmm. that's risky really and it certainly doesn't look like he wandered in there it looks like he's got some long-term growth stuff going on oh, yeah he's been there for a while mm-hmm. sad Whew. sad but that's intense how it goes Uh this scene so we find out how ellie is bidden Mm -hmm. and what stood out to me was how quickly this thing's i mean this was like seconds after she she got chomped let's watch it Mm -hmm. whoops there you go Oh, I feel, I feel it again. Okay, okay. But what I wanted to say was, look how quickly this <laughs> thing's turning. Like, this is already... Already growing, yeah. Pretty, yeah, yeah. It, this is becoming fungusy, And she tries to wipe it away, but, like, it stopped bleeding already. It's mm-hmm. healing over. I guess healing over, but also infected. Just, it's, well, a it's, fast, the, it's so fast, yeah, the cordyceps. It's so fast, yeah crazy i mean i guess that's consistent with what you get bit and like the next day you're attacking people yeah it works fast scary super scary mm-hmm. a fungus mm-hmm. yep and so confirmed uh, we we see how ellie was bitten how she gets launched into the the show and we see riley also get bit and and yeah the sadness of this this is the end they know it um, but that makes me think, well, like, this is... Oh, go ahead. I was just saying that Ellie also thinks it's the end. It's the end, so yeah. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see if they show us, uh, you know, how Riley dies and Ellie survives and then Marlene comes in, grabs up Ellie, locks her up. I, uh, you know, how I does did, Riley not attack Ellie? That's exactly yeah. my question. So I think the, they're going to skip it because it's super sad already. But Riley's going to turn. Like, she's not in the rest of the show. So does Ellie kill Riley's infected body? Like, does she additionally have to kill this young woman that she, like, just fell in love with? I'm going to guess that Ellie can't kill her because she thinks she's going to die and she's, and Riley has just turned earlier. So when Riley attacks Ellie, she's going to let it happen, which means maybe the fireflies show up. Marlene Ooh. shows up, kills Riley, and then figures out, oh, shit. Ellie's immune. Maybe. Ah, and that's how she gets caught up with Marlene. She's like, I'm bit, mm-hmm. but I'm okay. <laughs> and, my, and yeah. Marlene's like, hmm. hmm. Okay. Okay. Which means Marlene is a really thoughtful person. She's like on the lookout for 
stuff that could be helpful. Not just like, infected! Maybe they get in a fight and Riley is starting to attack at Marlene and then Ellie has to go finish her because they've been playing Mortal Kombat. And then she spits out her femurs. All the femurs. All the femurs in the world. (laughs) Okay, so this scene was we're back to the present day. Ellie is in the house with Joel, I think in the garage or maybe the basement on a mattress and he's got this stab wound. And Ellie's sort of panicking, running around the house, looking for something to help. She finds a sewing kit to go sew. But what would we look for? I would look for alcohol. Ooh. That would be my number one. Would be I'm looking for alcohol. Because you're a drunkard? <laughs> yes, because I want to get drunk and drink away my pain. That's more important. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, right? Yeah. It's just going bad. <laughs> what I'm saying is... I need the antiseptic. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. You need to yeah. clean the wound. Right. In fact, anything will really do. Soap. I mean, okay. cleaner. I mean, I don't, I got to kill the bacteria and infectious agents that are in Joel. I mean, okay, mm. so if he's bleeding internally, there's nothing I can do. I can't sew right. up veins or arteries. I guess right. arteries. If his colon has been pierced. Or in any of his intestinal tract. Yeah, he's been pierced. He's got literal shit pouring into his insides. He's probably going to die. So if I'm assuming uh, that those things are not the case, internal bleeding has stopped and his intestinal tract has not been pierced, then I think the third priority is by whatever means necessary, cleaning out the insides of him so that I can sew him back up. Mm -hmm. So alcohol. Hell, even like toilet cleaner. I don't know. Even though that's toxic. I mean, what else are you going to, you know, you got to kill the shit. <laughs> Bleach? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I, heck, even like a strong acid, even if it kills mm-hmm. the, like the first, I don't know, half centimeter of tissue, that's better than bacteria mm-hmm. being in there. And then now your whole body is going to go septic. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You need to oh, do heck. multiple rounds, you know, right. you know, put in the antiseptic and then bandage and then take it off, do antiseptic again over the course of the next few days. How do we feel about cauterizing? I know it worked in like Star Wars. Like people <laughs> lose their hands. Just zoop. <laughs> but this is internal though. Oh yeah. So so if the stab wound was sufficiently superficial such that no organs were punctured. I mean, I guess it's possible. Is it possible that you can get stabbed fairly deeply and just coincidentally not have any organs? I think, so. I think it's possible. I think, I think okay, it's so, possible. So, so provided that... Joel's stab wound is only like muscular and not not any organs inside then cauterizing would at least stop the whatever is alive there you just burn everything right mm-hmm. and I guess you, could, you you could stop some internal bleeding with that if yeah you knew where it was bleeding from but also if you're jabbing some hot stuff in there you could also just deal a lot of damage to That's other right. things yeah so what would you be looking for? I'd, I'd be looking for alcohol first. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Do you agree? I would look for a library card so I can go to the library and then learn about... Wait, wait, you're making that face. <laughs> I can learn about how to take care of Joel's wounds. Um, probably too late, but for the next Joel, uh, I would be well knowledgeable about how to make care of wounds. I mean, we so, have been so, talking <laughs> about going to the library in the post-apocalypse, uh, and this is an example if you're at the library beforehand, obviously there's time crunch here, but you had learned about first aid, first aid essentially. Second aid. Yeah. And even knew what the internal organs are and what their functions are, like knowing the intestine is the shit tube. That is gonna, <laughs> gonna, gonna help. I mean, that wasn't common knowledge for a long time. I don't know what the education sure. system's That's like, true. so. Um, yeah, I wonder how much lost knowledge there is. Yeah, yeah e- even knowledge of like where the liver is versus the kidneys versus mm-hmm. the large intestine, small intestine, the little mm-hmm. pathy. Yeah, that would be yeah. incredibly important knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but jokes aside, I, I <laughs> would sharp, sharp knives if I needed to get in there to cut mm-hmm. um, some type of fire. If I need to make some hot water, mm-hmm. a container so I can make hot water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Band-Aids probably not sticky anymore. So just any type of cloths so I can cloths, yeah. Heck, even a weight so that I could put some 
some constant pressure on that wound. Oh, there you go. I like that. I guess this plastic bowl in this particular picture wouldn't be a good water container because it would melt if the water was hot. Right. So you want metal containers? You can. So I oh, thought glass. that... Oh, yeah, glass could work. I mean, maybe. I think metal would be better, but... Absolutely. Because glass could... Good, good fit. I thought uh, Ellie going for the, you know, the sewing needle and the thread... I, as far as I understand, like sewing, like closing the wound is not a high priority at this point. I could be wrong. Is anybody, if anybody's a medical doctor or something, let us know. But like sewing up the wound, you're just like sewing up infection inside. inside. Right. If it's not clean, then you're just keeping stuff in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better to be clean with an open wound than it is to be dirty with a closed wound. Right. Because then you can't clean it out. It's already closed up. Yeah. Already closed out, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Oof! So she Oof. she sews it up, pretty pretty clever. I was upset that she didn't ice him a little. <laughs> Let's put some snow on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's snow outside. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that is a numbing agent. Yeah, it'll help you out a bit. And sh I also, I mean, okay. Now that we've taken this picture, got real close in there, her hands look pretty clean. But I don't think she did wash her hands. Um, certainly not after she like rifled through the house. There's all sorts of stuff yeah. on her hands. Excellent manicure, so, though. I'll so take, that's another I'll reason to get it. some soap. So you can clean your yeah. own hands, at least, yeah. with soap and water. How do you and make soap? Alcohol. Something in animal fat plus something else. Lie? Lie in animal fat? Totally, totally doable <laughs> post-apocalypse to make it. Yeah, another reason to go to the library so you know how to make soap. What a critical component to life. So you're not here like me saying animal fat and something, something? No, something, you, something. You, you I, watched it on a, you know. I watched a MacGyver episode three decades ago. Yeah, I see those Instagrams and the TikToks <laughs> of like people in India making gigantic, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Cutting up in like perfect squares, yeah, mm -hmm. satisfying. Yeah. yeah. Oof, she heals him up. She, she, she um, sews him up, but... We don't know what the damage is inside. I guess this is a Hail Mary because it's like, okay, we're hoping the intestine's not breached. We're hoping there's no internal bleeding. And we're hoping there's a miracle that Joel's immune system will just take care of the infection. He is a fighter. And she's just going to sew him up and it's going to heal up. And he'll be that one in a million. Also, it's if true. I remember like the needles that medical people use to make sutures, uh, to make stitches, is like this curved hooky thing so like it like goes into the skin and pulls around this straight um, needle is going to be super painful because she's going to have to like dig like dig to get the needle to come back up oh yeah oh good point oh good luck joel <laughs> hang in there bud <laughs> okay okay yeah so will joel make it uh find out next time on the last of us find, find out I think they're going to be in that house for a couple weeks at least well, more than a couple weeks that's right he needs some recovery time which means she needs to start scavenging for food and water to keep him alive while he's trying to heal right and which means fight off the infection that's coming so we're talking food water heat you can't freeze out heat. there yeah. which also means smoke in the air which means people may come for them this is a dangerous they, place no, no 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 they brought a, a space heater they'll just plug it in that's a good point I mean, Fedra has power up, but they don't know about this place. That's right. It's thousands of miles away, but there is a connection. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Ellie's like, we should go to the mall. I know. That. And he's like, the fucking mall? Mall? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right, so All right. see what Join happens next in time. episode eight. Episode eight, The Last of Us.